With us now uh, from Washington to discuss the Atlantic special State of the Union issue is the magazine's editor-in-chief, James Bennett. And the cover story is titled, The Rise of the New Ruling Class, How the Global Elite is Leaving You Behind. With us now, the author of that story, Christia Freeland, in her piece, she writes this, and listen to this closely. The rich of today are different from the rich of yesterday. They are becoming a trans-global community of peers who have more in common with one another than with their countrymen back home, whether they maintain primary residence in New York, Hong Kong, Moscow, Mumbai, today super rich or increasingly a nation under themselves. Christia, I bring this up because we're going to go to Donnie Deutsch in a second, who had, who was at a place over Christmas. He hangs out with those where, guys. Where, well, really. Now, explain your story, and then let's weave Donnie into this narrative. So my story was basically based on the observation, which you talk about a lot on your show, that we're seeing this two-speed U.S. economy and a two-speed world economy. And the people at the very, very top, the top, not even the top 1%, the top 0.1%. Right. This is 0.0001%. 0, 0, 0, 0, right. yeah. They are doing incredibly well. And there are lots of arguments about why is it. Is it because of the technology revolution? Right. Is it about financial deregulation? Is it about globalization? Right. But the statistics are, they show irrefutably that you're seeing this group pull away. And what I write about in my piece is who are they, what are they like, and what is the impact of this community they're forming on everybody and else. You, say, you make an interesting observation you did off camera saying that a financier in New York has more in common with a financier in Africa than with his next door neighbor because they meet in Hong Kong. They meet in Mumbai. They meet in St. Bart's. Yeah, absolutely. They are s forming this community of people who actually travel to the same places. They probably spend more time in Dubai or in the Four Seasons in Shanghai than they do, you know, bowling, which may be, you know, the top guy in your community in the 1950s. You would all hang out together on the weekends. Now they hang out with Donnie Deutsch and St. Now, Donnie, let me bring you in because all morning you've been talking about, you went down to St. Bart's, you've been talking about how this global community came together at St. Bart's. You, you could, if you were going to illustrate your article, it was there. If you, it was fascinating. In the harbor, you had one 300, 400, 500, 600 foot boat after the, and from the different countries. You had Abramovich, the $20 billion oligarch from uh, Russia. Russia, who was the king of the island. You have, you, it came together. It's exactly what is, is fascinating. One community, and it, and it was, it was countryless. It was, it was, but the fascinating, the most decadent of all are the brick country money. It's this new, 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 new money. Oh, James, oh, James Bennett, what's the impact of this on the rest of us? Well, it's the, the consequences are huge. Christian does, uh, I think, a beautiful job in the piece of describing who these people are and what this kind of emerging culture is like. But she also really wrestles with what the, what the effects of this are. And as these people hit kind of separation velocity, um, you're seeing that they can find middle-class workers and middle-class consumers anywhere in the world now. They're a little less concerned about the American middle class than they might have been in the past. And so they become less concerned with issues is, like is domestic that a, education. Is that an understatement, a little less concerned? Chris, do you want to take it away? Well, I think... I mean, let's be blunt. I will be blunt. Um, the thing is, I am pro-capitalist, and I understand why these guys want to make the most money possible and are looking for where the best opportunities are. But the real political consequence is they are operating, they have, as James says, reached escape velocity. They are operating in this global economic space. And the reality is they aren't as concerned about finding jobs for the people well, who they live because, with. Because and, and they, don't, they don't see boundaries, James. These are people right. who, and we know them, mm -hmm. these are people who are probably up if they're in New York at 2 in the morning, and they're looking at Asian markets, and they're seeing how money moves across boundaries. There are no borders anymore for these people. There are only billions to be made. That's exactly right. And, Joe, you were wondering earlier, though, the, the, the flip side of this, you were wondering earlier how could 60 percent of Americans be advocating tax, you know, higher taxes on the wealthy as a way to deal with the budget crisis. I think part of that is a response to this sense that they're being left behind by these people. You know, they, they hear, as Christian writes in this piece, that 
the top 25 hedge fund managers made more than a billion dollars each oh. on average last oh. year. <laughs> and they kind of think maybe those people should be kicking a little bit more of that money back. Uh, you'd yeah. think. Good luck getting it. You'd think. You know, the one, one of the elements of, of both these pieces, what Jim is talking about, what Chris was talking about, is a combustible element that is at large in our culture, I think in around the world actually, social rage. Increasing social rage toward the rich. Yes. Nobody, nobody gives birth to a child and says, oh, I hope this baby grows up to be poor. <laughs> no, nobody wants to live in a one-bedroom home by the side of an expressway with six kids packed in the house. And this rage that's simmering in this country, it's evidenced in the polls, okay. uh, and it's unheard. They don't listen to it. The rich don't listen. And that, hey, Don, Donnie, what... Do, oh. If I could just jump in, one of the really great points I think Christian makes here and why this disconnect is so deep is that these people, a lot of these really successful people are meritocrats. I mean, they're first and second generation yeah. immigrants who made it on their own. And so they really feel like they kind of deserve what they made on the one hand. On the other hand, they sort of think, well, why didn't you make it too? Hmm. You know, if I made it. So there's a little less of a sense that of, of, of maybe in the old days of noblesse oblige or, or there, there's a kind of sense of legitimacy mm -hmm. to their success that makes them feel aggrieved when other people start complaining about and and again, this, this, is, this is so interesting, Mika, because this is not, as Christian points out, this is not old money. No, and no, no, no. And as points out, this is the newest of new it's money. It's not even new money. And the thing I found out, because <laughs> right. I've never been around wealthy people until I ran for Congress the first time, and I found that when you went to somebody that did a paper route yeah. when they were eight or nine, and they saved that money, and then they built this small company, mm. and then they became very wealthy. They had very little use for people with whining stories. Whereas you get old money, they you know, want to write checks and feel good about it. Of course, there's guilt. See, I, I totally there's agree with that, but, but, but Mike is right that the problem is there is this huge tension. And yeah. if you well, have this two speed economy, which we have, people who didn't make it into the billionaire class are saying, Don't underestimate Wait a that tension. James, James, we want to get you back too because you have a fascinating hot, hot story talking story. about the dumbing down of the U.S. military and yeah. numbers. Oh. And also Mitch McConnell and why he doesn't really give a damn whether anybody likes him or not. James and Krista, thank you. It's in the Atlantic. Thank you, James. Thank, thank you, James, yeah. for running my piece. <laughs> thank you, Krista.